and we go to the next slide and I have a doctor on this slide. Oh my goodness, because when you come to this question, you're busy with what? First principles, derivative rules, equations of tangents, points of inflection. What is this? Calculus. And I wrote this there, you nearly at the end of your paper one, and it's calculus, and you're doing well so far, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I can maybe become a doctor because I'm doing well in this paper. My marks are going to be excellent. And there we go. Our next question is calculus. The first question in calculus is your first principles. Now, I just want to say, if they ask you on the 28th of October, determine the derivative using first principles. What formula do you write down? You immediately go to your formula sheet and you write down first principles, I must find the derivative is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Will this formula be given to you? Absolutely. You don't have to study it. It will be given to you. You write down this formula when? You only write down this formula grade 12s if you see the word first principle. That is when you must find the derivative. When you see the word first principle, you write down this. Now, what if they ask me for the derivative and I'm not asked to use first principles? Then we do what? We go to de derivative rules. What is derivative rules? Okay, so if I give you this, everybody, I hope you're listening. I hope you're taking this all in. If I say f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 1 over x minus root x, and I put a 3 here. And I ask you to find the derivative. And I do not say by using first principles. Then you don't write down this formula because you didn't see the word first principles. They just ask you to find the derivative. So what do we do? We use our differentiation rules. Now grade 12s, I think you all know that you're not ready to find the derivative. You can find the derivative of this um, term here, but you can't find the derivative of this. We cannot find the derivative if you have an x at the bottom of your fraction. The x needs to be taken up. You cannot find the derivative if you have a root, if you have a third. You need to get rid of it. Watch closely what you do. So you still write f of x because you're not finding the derivative yet, and that's 3x squared. And when I take this x upward and I put it in exponential form, it becomes x to the power of negative 1. I hope you all wrote it down before I even said that. And then how do I get rid of the root? Watch me quickly. I put down my x. I know that there is a 1 inside. So it's 1 on top. The 3 is outside the root, so it goes to the bottom. Inside is on top. Outside is at the bottom. Can you see how you go from third form to exponential form? Are you ready to find the derivative now? Absolutely. You can then write that the derivative is equal to, you take your exponent times by the number in front, 2 times 3 is 6 x, take away 1 from the exponent, 2 minus 1 is 1. You say negative 1 times the number in front. Remember, there's a 1 in front. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. You take away 1 from the exponent. Now, don't when you take away 1, say it's 0. Negative 1, negative 1 is negative 2. Again, you do the same. Everybody, you can see there's a 1 in front of x. A third times negative 1 is negative a third. You put your x down. What must I do here with a third? Take away 1. Every single time you take away 1 from the exponents, a third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. You can do that on your calculator if you're not sure. 
once you have found the derivative, you put all your negative exponents in positive exponential form. Remember that 6x is fine. It's cool. That is a plus. But that negative is not cool. I don't want a negative exponent to make it positive. Watch me. I now take it down to the bottom and the negative 2 becomes a plus 2. That negative two-thirds, I don't like it. I don't like negative exponents. So I'm going to make it positive. So bring it down together with the three. And that becomes two over three. And there you have found your derivative. What I try to do here is just to show you what is the difference between my first principle, that's my formula, and then this is when I'm not using first principles and I'm using my laws. In this question for calculus, if we go to our slide again, you're going to be asked to work out equations of tangents. Remember, tangent is the gradient. You work out the gradient. Remember, tangent is a straight line, y equal to mx plus c. You find m by working out the derivative and substituting in the value of x. And the last thing that I wrote down here is point of inflection. Grade 12's point of inflection, you use second derivative. Second derivative for point of inflection or point of inflection is in the middle of two turning points. In the middle of two turning points okay so now you go to the next slide and you see what is that I am now going to explain or going through the cubic graphs this is all still part of calculus you must know how to sketch the cubic graphs I wrote down there for you to sketch the cubic graphs you need to find your y intercepts you need to find your x intercept and you need to find your turning points and once you have your x intercept your y intercept and your turning points you can sketch that graph i hope that you are all okay with finding the x intercept remember there you need a factor in your first bracket and in your second bracket, you need to factorize. So how do I sketch a cubic graph? I need three steps, my y-intercept, my x-intercept, and my turning points. How do you work out turning points of a cubic graph? You use your derivative. Remember that. This is derivative. That is factorizing. That is just the value of your constant. Then in cubic graphs, we can also give you the graph. If the graph is given, then you answer questions on the graph. Okay, so sometimes we're going to give you the graph and you must answer questions or you're going to be asked to sketch it. I know you all prefer to sketch it. We like that question more, but we don't know what the examiners are going to ask this year. So prepare yourself for both. Then in that question, they can ask you, like I said, the equation of a tangent. And then they can ask you point of inflection. They can ask you to find a root. If one root is given, find the value of k. If one root is given, two roots are given. That is all on cubic graphs. Okay, so I've now said you've got your calculus question. And you're going to get first derivatives, uh, your first principles, your normal derivatives. And then you're going to sketch, maybe sketch a graph, a cubic graph, or they're going to give you a graph. They definitely maybe going to ask you to find an equation of a tangent. You see point of inflection there. And one root, two roots, three roots. We've done this with you. <clears throat> there was a, a Lorraine did cubic graphs with you. I hope that you're all okay with the cubic graphs. And then the last question on calculus is the following. Our last question is application of maximum and minimum. Okay, this is a little bit difficult. Yeah, I said any shape can be given to you in this question. A cylinder, a rectangular prison, any shape can be given to you in this question. You must know your formulas for surface area and for volume. Just remember volume always has a height, length times breadth times height. Or you can have pi r squared times height. Please look at the volume. Study this. Know your formulas for surface area and volume. Then I wrote here, if you are asked to determine the maximum or minimum, a lot of my students say, ma'am, I cannot find these formulas. I battle with them. Then I say, okay, don't leave this question out. The minute you see the word maximum or minimum in this question, you take the formula that they give you 
and you find the derivative of that formula. Do you understand what I'm saying? You take the formula that they give you, even though you couldn't find it. The minute you see the word maximum or minimum, you work out the derivative. Why the derivative? Because the maximum or minimum is reached at the turning points. So you work out your derivative. You put your derivative equal to zero and you solve what was asked. So if you can't get that, maybe the first question, you can at least score these five marks here. This is normally five to six marks. Can you see? So try not to leave this out grade 12s because I see a lot of my students, they're not so confident then they leave out that part but they still get these two parts and they get five marks and they don't get zero. So look out for that. And I wrote here that your calculus, all the calculus is about plus minus 35 marks. And I'm sure that you can do well in that.